Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can create this timeless wedding colour grading look in your photos just using Lightroom. Now, I love this look because it works on, well, almost any type of photo. That's why I've called it timeless. Any photo, any time of year. Now, if you'd like to follow along with the same photo that I'm going to be editing in today's video, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. And I'm going to start right now. Now, what I really like about this look is it doesn't require us to majorly manipulate the colors in our photos. We're going a lot more for a, a natural, more sophisticated look. We're not gonna be changing the colors too much. It should work on almost any type of photo, regardless of if you shot it indoors, outdoors, or whatever time of year you shot it in. Okay, so this is the photo I'm going to be editing. So what we're gonna do is head over to the develop panel and now drop down to the basics panel. Now, the first thing we're going to change is our color profile. So right at the top here, you can see where it says profile. We're gonna click on where it says Adobe color. And because we are editing a wedding photo, we're gonna change this down to Adobe portrait. Now after that, we're gonna now change our white balance. Now there's a few ways we can actually change the white balance inside Lightroom. If you're really struggling to get the right white balance, what I recommend doing is watching this video here where I go over three tips on how you can change and actually manipulate color casts within your photo, as well as how you can get the right white balance for your image. Now for this photo, because we haven't shot in a majorly complicated lighting environment, I can actually use some of the presets inside Lightroom. So all I'm gonna do is go to where it says as shot, and all I'm gonna do is go ahead and click auto and it's done a pretty good job. Now, if you are still struggling, you can always use the white balance selector tool, or you can always go into your temperature and tint sliders and manipulate it from there. But for this photo, it's at 62,000 uh, Kelvin with a 19% in tint. And that's all we're gonna do for our white balance. Now we're gonna go out and change into our exposure. Now, I find this photo is a little bit dark, so what I'm gonna do is bring up that exposure just slightly. I'm gonna leave contrast alone because we're actually gonna change contrast in the tone curve later on in this video. So now let's tackle our highlights and shadows. Now the highlights are really bright. So what I'm gonna do is bring that highlights down. You can really see that in the sky. I'm gonna bring that down to around about minus 70 there. And then with the shadows, I'm finding there's just so much detail missing from this image. So what I'm gonna do is go to my shadows here and really bring that up. But I'm not gonna bring it up too much. So around about 40 in this example. And now we've got our whites and blacks. All I'm gonna do is add in a little bit of dynamic range. We can see that we can do that with inside our histogram here. So I'm gonna do go to my whites here, increase that by plus 10, and then shadows here, I'm gonna decrease that by minus 10. Now let's tackle our texture, clarity, and dehaze. Now what I like doing for all of my wedding photos or any portrait photos is actually creating a negative clarity effect. So with my texture here, I'm gonna go for plus 10. With my clarity, I'm gonna go for minus 20. Between minus 10 and minus 20 works for most photos. Now, this will really soften out those skin tones. Now, obviously this image, the skin tones take up a very small proportion of the overall image, but because we're creating this as a preset, so you'll be able to apply it to the rest of your photos in your gallery, if the skin tones take up more of a proportion, you wanna make sure they're nice and soft. So for that, a negative clarity works on basically every single wedding photo. And then lastly, we've got dehaze here. Now there's a little bit of haze in the background. I'm not sure if you can see that. If I go ahead and zoom in, so there's a little bit of haze there. So what I'm gonna do is go to my dehaze here and increase that by plus 10. But we are going to leave vibrance and saturation alone for this video because we're going to be affecting that in step two when we go ahead and tackle color grading. But there's one more thing we need to do before we go ahead and do that, and that is the tone curve. So what I'm gonna do is exit out of the basics panel and now drop down to tone curve. Now in tone curve, it allows us to basically manipulate our exposure and contrast. It's a really powerful tool. If you'd like to know more, go ahead and watch this video here. But what we're gonna do is create a color contrast effect in this image. So we're gonna skip out our exposure point curve. We're gonna to go to our red, green, and blue channels here. Now for this, we're gonna create a very simple and very subtle S curve. An S curve is basically where we brighten the highlights and darken those shadows. So all we could do is make a point roughly where the highlights are, make a point roughly where the shadows are, bring up those highlights slightly, and simply bring down those shadows, creating a very subtle S curve. And you might wanna change this depending on your photo. Now we've done it to the red channel, so what we need to do now is right click, copy channel settings, go to our green channel, right click, paste channel settings and do the same for the blue channel. Right click, 
paste channel settings. And we can see we've added in this really nice color contrast effect. What I can do is show you the before and after of just the tone curve. So we do the before, and after we've added in that nice rich tone to it. And that works really nice to create this timeless wedding look because we're not affecting the colors as of yet. Now we are in step two when we go ahead and do color grading. Now, when it comes to color grading, we don't want to change or manipulate the colors too much. We want to keep it more natural and sophisticated. So for that, we're going to be using two major tools, the color mixer tool that allows us to change the anatomy of our colors, and then the color grading tool. We're going to add a little bit of warmth to those highlights. Now, let's start off with the big tool, and that is the color mixer tool. And it's split up into three sections and into eight color bands. We've got our hue, saturation, and luminance. Now, hue is the type of color, so red, green, blue, orange, these are hues. We've also got saturation, which is the amount or purity of that color. And then lastly, we have luminance. If you'd like to know more about color theory, go ahead and watch this video here. So let's start off with hue first. And what we're gonna do is skip out reds and oranges for this photo because it's a wedding photo and it's got skin tones. And the last thing you wanna do is change the color of those skin tones. So what we're gonna do is go straight down to yellow. What we're gonna do is go for plus 15 in the yellow and plus 15 in the green. That'll make the greens and yellows a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more stronger in the photo, whilst also removing some of that muddiness that you can get, especially in the autumn season. And then what we've got is aquas and blues. We're gonna go for a negative number. We're gonna go for minus 15 and minus 15. That will make the sky a little bit more teal, a little bit more summery looking, while actually not changing it too much. So that's all we're gonna be doing in the hue. Now let's move over to saturation. Now saturation, again, we wanna skip out reds and oranges. Let's go straight down to yellows. We want to remove some of these colors so the skin tones pop a little bit more. We can do that by creating a negative number. So what we're gonna do is go for minus 15 in the yellows and minus 15 in the greens. And we're gonna go for a slightly stronger effect with aquas and blues. So we've got aqua here, we're gonna go for minus 30 and minus 30. So that will make the skin tones pop a little bit more without actually making or adding more saturation, which is what's really important. And now let's go ahead and move over to luminance. Now in luminance, what we're going to do is actually brighten quite a few colors. So we're gonna go again, skip out reds and oranges. We're gonna go to yellows here. We're gonna go for plus 30 in the yellows, plus 30 in the greens, and then we're gonna go for negative 20 in the aquas, and negative 20 in the blues. That will darken the sky a little bit, create a bit more of a balanced exposure. As well as we've brightened those tones, adding a little bit more of a subtle, more kind of high key look without making it really, really strong in the photo. So the timeless look is really taking a bunch of different looks that I've kind of made over the years and kind of compiled them into one. And it works really well. So that's all we're gonna be doing in Color Mixer. So we're gonna skip out of that, and now let's go down to color grading. And all we're gonna be doing is tackling those highlights. We're gonna add a slightly warmer hue to them, but very subtle. So what we're gonna do is go to my highlights here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a hue of between 30 and 50. I'm gonna choose 35 in this example. And then we've got saturation here. All I'm gonna do is increase that right by around plus 10. But it might be different for your photo, depending on how bright or how dark your photo is. You might wanna go for a slightly different number. And so far, this particular look is coming out really, really well. What I can do is show you the before and after, but we're not done yet. We've got masking and photo effects left. So now let's move over to step three, which is masking. Now in masking, we want to brighten and darken certain areas of our photo. Now for this photo, I am finding the ground is a little bit distracting. I really want the kind of couple to pop out from my photo. And the best way to do that is to create a darkened mask. So what I'm gonna do is go over to my masking panel. I'm gonna go ahead and select linear gradient, and then I'm gonna hold down shift so my gradient is straight, and go ahead and select most of the bottom part of my image. So I'm gonna go for a nice soft graduating gradient, something like so. Then I'm gonna go to my exposure here and simply bring that down. I might bring it down by one entire stop. But obviously it's now actually affecting the bride and groom. So what I'm gonna do with my mask selected, I'm gonna to go to subtract and then simply select subject. That will create a cutout within our mask. And as you can see, it's worked really nicely. So the bride and groom are now popping out a little bit more by simply darkening the area around them, which is really nice. Removing some of that distracting ground I thought it was just a little bit bright for our photo. And what I want to do with the highlights here is to really soften them out. So we've created a darkened mask, now we're gonna create a lightened mask. 
So what we're gonna do is create a new mask. I'm gonna go ahead and create a linear gradient this again. Hold down shift, select most of the sky. Go for something like so. And then I'm gonna go to my exposure, bring that up, not by much, so maybe a quarter of a stop. Then I'm gonna go down to my effects. I'm gonna go to texture here. I'm gonna go for minus 10 in texture, minus 20 in clarity, and minus 10 in dehaze. And I actually really like this fit. What I can do is quickly show you the before and after of just those two masks. So what I can do is show you the before and after, and that's worked really nicely. Now, of course, you can go a little bit further if you wanted to create a subject selection mask and maybe adapt the colors further. But for this particular photo, I don't think it needs it. But your photo might, so you might want to add a few more masks to your photo. So now let's move over to step four, which is photo effects. Now when it comes to photo effects, we want to do two things. We want to remove any distractions from our image, as well as adding in a slight post-cropping vignette. So now let's remove distractions. Now, in this photo, I think there are two major distractions, and hopefully you can see them as well. The one on the right, obviously, is this guy. These are the toilet blocks of this uh, particular wedding venue. So there's people walking in and out constantly. So this is the one that we've got in this image, so we need to remove him. As well as on the left-hand side, we've got some chairs left out from the reception earlier that day. So we want to remove those as well. I'm finding those a little bit distracting. But there are sheep in the background, so I do want to keep them. So let's go ahead and remove this guy first. So what we do is head over to my remove tool. I'm gonna to go ahead and select generative remove. I'm gonna go ahead and select him. Go round, choose a good area. Go for something like so. Okay, so we've removed him. Now let's go ahead and select those chairs. So I'm gonna select all these chairs. Got a plant pot sitting on top of it as well. So we wanna remove that. And these chairs here. Now, of course, you don't have to use generative remove if you don't want to. I just find it's a little bit more successful when removing more complicated objects like these. And once you've done that, all you need to do is go ahead and click remove. Six and a half hours later. And as you can see, it's done a pretty good job. If we move around, you can see they've basically completely removed. And it's actually added in a small little uh, tree stalk here, which is, actually looks really realistic. Now, it gives us three variations. So we've got one. We've got two and we've got photo three. I think the first variation is probably the best on both the left and right hand side. And that has worked really well. All we need to do now is adding in a post cropping vignette. So we'll go down to my effects panel here. We've got our post cropping vignette that you can see here. All I'll do is add in a negative vignette. So I might go for around about minus 20. Now that's a little bit strong, but I don't want to reduce that number any further. So what I'm gonna do is go to my feather amount here and increase that all the way to 100%. And as you can see, this particular photo looks absolutely amazing. And I love this particular look. What I can do is show you the before and after. But to show you it doesn't just work on this one photo, I'll show you a couple more that I've done. So what I can do, move over to photo two. It's the same couple, re uh, a photo I've taken slightly earlier in the day. What I can do is show you the before and after. And I love this look. I've got another photo from the same wedding. What I can do is show you the before and after. And to show you, it's not just this one wedding. Here's another photo before and after. And then we've got this photo here. Now these are shot, photos shot inside in London. And again, it just works so well. We've got the before and after. And we've got a few more. I love this look because it creates this kind of high key look without it being too strong. We've got this photo inside an elevator. Now this is a very complicated lighting environment, but it works really well. If I do the before and after, we've got that nice, nice look. I just really like it. And then this photo was outside again, before and after. And then we've got ooh, a few more photos. I love these photos of the shoes. If we do the before and after, yeah, absolutely love it. And hopefully you do too. And of course, remember to save this as a preset so you can apply it to the rest of your photos in your gallery. Thank you to all of my YouTube members that are currently supporting the channel. If you guys wanna support the channel and get some awesome perks, including free Lightroom presets like the one we've just made today, and make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next week.